Hi everyone, welcome to video number two of my series of videos on probability for actuarial exam one, also called exam P. But if you don't want to be an actuary, you'll still learn a lot of probability, okay? This particular question could be thought of as being a little bit more related to insurance because it's about a visit to a doctor's office, so insurance would be involved. As in the first video, I'm going to be using a Venn diagram to help me solve the problem. It's a fairly easy problem. You could even say it's easier than the one in the first video. And because of that, I also want to build on the first video by introducing some new ideas, some notations, set or event notation and probability notation. These notations will be important for us when we solve more complicated problems involving more complicated formulas. It will be helpful to do that. Solving this problem, it's, it's a pretty easy problem. You can just quickly make a diagram, think about it pretty quickly, and get the answer. So we'll do it that way first. We'll solve it as quick as possible. Then we will talk about a more algebraic way to check the answer or solve it if you can't figure out how to solve it just in your head. Then I will show you the notation, and then in the last video, um, as in the last video, I will show you some Mathematica code that will make a, a diagram that will be helpful for future videos in terms of our thought processes. All right, so again, the goal here is to use a Venn diagram with two circles to solve a problem involving a doctor visit resulting in two options. I'm specifying that these are overlapping options. They could occur at the same time. That's not explicitly stated in the problem itself right here. But if it's not explicitly stated, you should assume that both options could occur. And again, talk about the notation. Here's the question itself. The probability we talked about the meaning of probability in the last video as an assessment of the chances of something happening as you are about to do a random experiment. In this case, picking a person at random who went to this primary care physician's office. That the probability that uh, when they go, it results in neither lab work nor referral to a specialist is 35%. It's a less than 50% chance. How would that be determined? It would be based on past data. Okay what percentage of the people had neither lab work done nor referral to a specialist. It's important to understand the language here, neither nor. What does that mean? It means, in this case, they did not have lab work done and they did not get referred to a specialist. It's important to understand that here. That's one key thing to solving this problem correctly. Of those coming to the office, 30% are referred to specialists and 40% require lab work. These are just percentages. It's not labeled as probabilities. However, you should understand that these could be interpreted as probabilities. Again, this is past data that we're looking at, but now we're about to pick somebody at random. These percentages still are assessments of likelihoods. But again, keep in mind that somebody could be referred to a specialist and have lab work done. Goal is to calculate the probability that a visit to the PCP's office results in both lab work and referral to a specialist here. This word and is important. We are talking about the overlap here, the people who have both done. All right, so we solved the problem as quickly as possible to start this video. And if all you care about is the answer, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but I'm gonna, these, my videos build on each other very much. It's good to watch them in the series, so I think it would be good for you to watch till the end. So here's our box representing um, maybe, like I said in the last video, a gymnasium where all the people who've gone to this doctor's office, they have to stand in the gymnasium. And you tell them, you need to stand in certain circles based on what you've had done in the past. Maybe this circle here represents those who referred to, were referred to specialists in the past. I'll label that with an S for specialist. And another circle that overlaps is going to be where people have to stand if they've had lab work done. And then what they have in common, their intersection, would be people who've had both uh, lab work done and they were referred to a specialist. And the percentage of people that stand in there is going to be the answer to the question. What is the probability that a randomly chosen person will have both lab work done and referral to the specialist? That's going to be the people inside both of these. Okay, so let's solve the problem now. Start with the first piece of information in this problem. Neither nor neither S nor L means not S and not L. You're both outside the red circle and outside the purple circle. You're standing outside of both circles. You're in this region out here. You could label that with 35% or 0.35 if you like. 35% again means 35 per 100. Percent means per 100. 
35 over 100, that fraction is 0.35. Okay? So let's solve the problem here in just a few seconds. Just think about it here. 35% of the people have to stand outside both circles. That means you've got 100 minus 35. 65% have to stand inside one circle or the other or both. Since these two numbers add to 70%, that means 70 minus 65, 5% is left over to be in both. Did you get that? 100 minus 35 or 65 have to be in these, three cir these two circles combined or both. But because these two numbers add to 70, the answer must be 70 minus 65, 5%. Okay, the answer to the question we have figured out very quickly is 5%. I should have double checked this. I believe this is answer A. If you look at the options on the sample P questions online, I believe it's answer A. I'm, I'm not positive, but you can look it up. But it, the answer is 5%. Okay, so that answers the questions, but let's fill things in more to understand the bigger picture and maybe confirm that we really thought about it correctly. On an actual, actual actuarial exam, it's probably not a good idea to spend too much time doing what I'm about to do. Um, as far as being more sure, we could, for example, label uh, these different regions, A, B, uh, here, here, and here, with the letters A, B, and C. And those could be thought of as representing unknown numbers that I want to solve for, and, and the answer to the question is what the value of little b is. I could write down a system of algebra equations here. I know that A plus B plus C must be 100 minus 35 or 65. You can put a percent sign there if you like. What else do I know? I know that A plus B must be the 30. Okay. You don't want to label just this part with the 30. That's a common place people might make mistakes. But you want these two things together, these two regions, to add up to 30. A plus B would be 30%. And then B plus C should add up to 40. The lab work. B plus C should add up to 40%. The goal would be here to solve this system of equations, just for B at least. You could solve for A, B, and C. Well, that's not too hard to do here. You could, for example, take this fact and use it to plug in for A plus B right there. That would imply that 30 plus C is 65. In other words, C is 35%. You could label this with 35% if you like. And then you could use that fact down here to say that B plus 35 must be 40, and therefore B must be 5% like we already knew was the answer. That is the answer to the question. If you wanted to figure out A and see if everything was consistent, you could then plug that back into here, for example. A plus 5 must be 30, so A must be 25 and then you could double check that these numbers, in fact, do all add, all add up to 100%. 25 plus 5 is 30, plus another 70 is 100%. Okay, And that could also help you see how to answer other questions, like what is the probability that somebody uh, ha has a referral to a specialist, but not lab work done? That would be the 25%. Okay, So you can answer other questions when you generalize like this. Next, let's talk about the probability notation. I'm not going to talk about probability formulas here, just notation for this video. Um, when you see something like this, or perhaps like this, with parentheses instead of square brackets, I think I'm going to more typically use square brackets like this instead of parentheses. Uh, why? Because that's the way I more commonly see it in textbooks. It's the way I'm used to. But either notation means the probability of S occurring. S and L can be thought of as events, things that can occur. The person could be, get referred to a specialist, or they could have lab work, or both. Um, that's event notation, using the letters to represent things that can happen. This can also be thought of in terms of sets. In this problem, it's best probably to think of sets of people. And somebody would be in the subset S of the set of all people if they had referral to a specialist. And there would be an L in the subset of all people that went to this primary care physician's office if they had lab work done in the past. Okay, So those, those could be thought of as sets as well. Uh, this would equal the 30%. This would be an example 
of information that would be given to you. And we can notationally write this. You could also write P of L, again, either with square brackets or parentheses, to represent the 40% of people who uh, had lab work done in the past. Um, I think I'll just use square brackets from now, right now on here. As far as this 35% who were neither, neither had lab work done nor referral to a specialist, um, you could use, it's common to use prime notation to represent when something is not happening. This is not a derivative from calculus, okay? This is just a notation with sets or events. S prime means the complement of S, those people who were not referred to a specialist in the past. And L prime would represent those people who were not, did not have lab work done in the past. And now I could put the word and in here. It's more common to put the intersection symbol, okay? That's the intersection symbol. In the context of events, it essentially means and, which is kind of fortunate because it almost looks like an A, okay? That's the 35%, and the goal would be to find the probability um, of somebody having both lab work done and referred to a, to a specialist, S intersect L without primes. That would be the goal, but that ends up being the 5%, okay? So that's an introduction to probability notation. Um, let's end the video by going to a Mathematica document, not just to see the Mathematica, uh, but to also see um, a way to think about these Venn diagrams that is sometimes helpful, especially when we get into something called um, conditional probability. Uh, so this is a Mathematica notebook. It's a computer program that can do various things. It can do a lot of cool math. I'm doing very basic things here, just making some diagrams that obviously can be made more simply in other ways <laughs> instead of the code that you see here. But the, this code does make the diagram. And what I want to emphasize here is a way to think about this conceptually. Here, So I made the Venn diagram again. The black box is the, the blue box that I drew by hand. It represents all the gymnasium, all the people who visited the doctor's office in the past. Um, and I didn't use circles this time for S and L. Instead, I'm using rectangles. And I purposely made these rectangles to have areas equal to the probabilities. For example, this red rectangle here, you can see has a height of 1 and a base going from 0.2 to 0.5. The base is 0.5 minus 0.2 equals 0.3 in length. And therefore, the area is 0.3 times 1 or 0.3. 30% of the overall area of the square, which is has an area of 1. And the blue rectangle here has a base that goes from 0.5 up to 0.85 here. Um, excuse me, 0.45 up to 0.85. It has a, a base length, therefore, of 0.4. Height is still 1. The area is 0.4. You can see it's a little bit bigger than the red rectangle here. And I purposely situated these things so that the overlap has an area of 0 0.05. The answer to the question P of S and L is 0 0.05. That's the answer to the question, and this area is 5%, 0 0.05 of the whole area. And the given information in the problem is what's labeled in pink here, the probability that somebody's not referred to a specialist and not had lab work, meaning neither nor, was the 35% that's given, and these two areas on the sides here add up to 35%. Thanks for watching.